If you look at the developing world um, and you look at the growth rates there, about 25% of the economies, uh, it's the estimate is about 25% of the economies in the developing world, uh, the growth in the economies is attributable to the digital uh, part of those economies. Now that's incredible because the, in the developing world, they have a tremendous opportunity to leapfrog to not be bound by the constraints that existed in, in all of their history, but to directly leapfrog and to be the equivalent of anybody else in the world when it comes to digital things, when it comes to having the best applications for mobile devices or to having the, the best kinds of technologies. Uh, that ability to cross the chasm is quite a remarkable one. But how did we get here? What principles have helped us get to this point where the digital economy is such a potent force, such a force that in some cases governments are worried about what to do about it. In, it's such a force that in some cases we have businesses saying that the digital economy ought to be reined in. That it's such a force that in some places you have community members worrying that information about their activities uh, gets shared online and the, the negative things that, that, that are going on in their part of the society get exposed. What really is behind that? What's, what's made that happen? Well, I posit to you that the reason, the primary reason why that has happened is because the internet, probably more than any other technology, any other invention in, in human history, has helped build communities, has helped bring down walls, and has helped put together communities. Communities that are not bound by geography, communities that are not necessarily dependent upon language, but communities that are able to come together on ideas, on able to share interests regardless of where they are in the world, what their situation is, what their economic uh, background is. And that is quite a significant new thing that has happened. And that is a big part of an open and free internet. If you don't have the ability, if you, if you, if you think that the possibility of, of a technology, of a, of a model that allows for communities to come together, if that possibility is placed at risk, then we really run the, the, the possibility that what we will have instead is a fragmented system with silos, with walls that come back towards each other. You know, Fadi uh, is fond of saying that um, no fortress built has ever not been breached. But oases invite people in and they sustain. And that's a big part of what the internet itself has done.